Lab TV travels to an Air Force research lab in San Antonio, Texas, to check out a huge spinning machine called the Human Centrifuge. So we're at Brook City Base, and this is the centrifuge. This is what we use to train our pilots on G-forces. Um, G-forces are pretty much, if you've ever ridden a roller coaster, you kind of get that feeling your stomach's about to come out of your mouth. That's kind of what G-forces are. G-forces are forces caused by acceleration, and pilots experience them during sharp turns. The tighter and faster the turn, the greater the G-force. They call it pulling Gs. To help them learn to pull G safely, the Air Force does high G training on the centrifuge. Before training, the pilot gets checked out by a doctor and then fitted with a special anti-G suit. It's like a giant blood pressure cuff that keeps the blood from pooling in his legs. So G-forces stand for gravitational forces. We're at 1G right now. That's actually what keeps us from floating into outer space. Pilots can experience over 6G when they fly. That's six times the force of gravity. If I was at 6G, my body would feel like if I weigh 100 pounds at 6G, my body would now weigh 600 pounds. If my hand weighs 10 pounds at 6G, is 60 pounds now. You can actually see how difficult it would be for a pilot to flip the switch here and have to do a lot of other things while pulling back on the stick. Sometimes the G-forces are so strong that pilots can lose consciousness. They call that G-lock. G-lock stands for G loss of consciousness or gravitational loss of consciousness. It's where the blood from the person's head is no longer in their head and it pulls down to their lower body. And of course, with no blood in your head, you're gonna pass out. You'll climb in, you'll sit back. Uh, don't worry, I'll strap you in. I'll hook everything up today for you. Uh, first ride today is gonna be a gradual to nine. You don't want him to be in an aircraft when he experiences that for the first time. You would rather him be pulling G's in a safe environment, the way we can bring him back down if he was to G-lock. What you're gonna do is you're gonna sit here nice and relaxed, you're gonna stare at the red light, use your peripheral for the green. To prevent G-lock, pilots are also taught an important maneuver called the anti-G strain, which combines muscle tightening and breathing. Get your calves nice and tight by either flexing your toes towards you or curling them underneath. Okay, that's gonna stop the blood from pulling any lower. It's gonna keep the blood about right here. So you wanna take in a deep breath, and then hold it, and then I'm gonna say breathe. Next thing they'll do is they'll take a deep breath and then lock it off. That's kind of creating pressure on, around their heart. Legs tight, deep breath, and then once they release that pressure, the heart will fill up with blood, and then once they put the pressure back on the heart, it'll squeeze the heart again. Now that's acting kind of like a pump and it's sending blood every three seconds back up to their head, so that way they won't G-lock. I'm gonna go ahead and check my crew data station. Ready? It's ready, operator? Ready. It's ready and medical. Ready. It is ready. Final ready. And three, two, one, engage. Legs tight, deep breath. Hold it. Your top breathe. One, two, breathe. One, two, breathe. Doing good. As the centrifuge spins, the pilot's body is trying to go straight, but the direction is constantly changing. This pushes the body outward. They call it a G-force or gravity force, but it's actually a measure of acceleration. Acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. Velocity is determined by both speed and direction. So even if the speed stays the same, because the direction is constantly changing, there is acceleration. This outward force is called centrifugal force, and it's expressed as a multiple of G. An untrained person might black out between four and six G. But a trained pilot wearing an anti-G suit and using the straining maneuver can go up to 9G in the centrifuge, just like this pilot did today. Oh yeah, there's a lot of math and science involved with this. And I would just say, you know, study, make sure you're doing the right things at school, and hopefully maybe one day you actually will get to work with a centrifuge. I've been here for about four and a half years. I learned from the best, and I just try to do the best I can every day I come in and, and get to play with my big uh, expensive toy. <laughs> To find out more about acceleration, G-forces, and the human centrifuge, check out labtvonline.org.